Are you interested in learning how construction projects come together? Well, 30 of my VIP students are getting a tour of our recent eight unit new build right here in Toronto. I'm taking them around the building, answering any questions they have about what's going on with this project and all of our future projects. Check it out. question was, what's, uh, what do we have for construction financing on this project? So um, we acquired the property with private financing, and then we were self-funding the construction up until now. So now we have an approval with CMHC for the construction financing, and we're also then doing the takeout with CMHC once the building is stabilized. So the way that that works is when you get a construction loan with CMHC, you basically get what's called a, a COI, a commitment of insurance. And that says that they're going to back the, the construction and then they'll also back, you know, um, the loan when, when it comes to being fully occupied. So once you have a CMHC commitment of insurance, all the lenders line up and want to work with you because it's essentially a guarantee. If you default on the loan, CMHC picks up the bill, right? That's an insurance product, basically. So at this point, we have the construction financing in place. Um, we are with Desjardins and they're basically doing the construction. And then once we occupy the building, then that construction loan will basically roll over to uh, term financing. So on this project, we got, um, I think our loan is $3.85 million. That's the construction uh, financing loan. And we're amortized over 50 years. We don't know the interest rate yet because the way that commercial financing works is it's based on the bond rates and it happens at the time of funding. So you don't really know what your actual rate is gonna be until like literally days before you do your, what's called your takeout financing. So, but on this project, uh, we'll be in a cash flow position from day one once we start. Um, basically, CMHC won't allow you to be in a, in, in a situation where you're not cash flowing. So once we stabilize the building, everything's occupied, it'll cash flow from the, from the moment that we start. So the way that the draw process works, for those of you that aren't super familiar with construction financing, what happens is you get money in, in uh, as you progress the project, right? So they don't wanna give me the full construction loan because that wouldn't be good for the, for the project. So what we do is we get advanced money once we complete various things. So you can see now we're framed, right? So now that we're framed, we would submit all of our invoices that we've had for framing and then our lender would issue us that money because we've completed that part of the project. So all along the, the, the process, you have what's called a quantity surveyor or a cost consultant and they basically check the work that's been done, check the invoices, they cross-reference those two things and they work between you and the lender to say, yes, this work's been done, it costs this much money and then the lender will advance the funds to us and then basically we take those funds and then we go to the next part of the project. We pay the electricians and the plumbers and all that kind of stuff. Then we submit those invoices and then they pay us for that work. And then we just kind of keep that same money just keeps rolling over and over and over until we hit that maximum of $3.85 million. And then if let's say we were over at that point, we would have to fund the project to, to complete it. So the way that the MLI Select program works is you have to hit one of three uh, criteria, energy efficiency, affordability or accessibility. Um, on this project, we started, we were gonna go affordability and then efficiency. But when the project, we had the problem with the contractor, then we really needed to maximize revenue as much as possible. So we scrapped affordability and we went efficiency. So this building is going to be built 40% above the minimum building code, which allows us to get 100 points with MLI Select which allows us to amortize our loan over 50 years. It's a non-recourse loan, which means that if uh, nobody has to put up a personal guarantee, and it's also, um, we get the, you know, the best terms in terms of the lowest premiums on our, on our financing. So that's, that's what we do on this project. We use the 40% efficiency. On our other projects, we're doing a mix. Uh, some of them we're doing efficiency. Some of them we're doing affordability and efficiency. So if you're doing, 10% of your units affordable, uh, which in our 10 unit building on Glen Lake, for instance, that's one unit. So we make those units small. We make them kind of like micro units, basically 350 square feet, because the program doesn't say how big the unit needs to be. It just says, here's the maximum rent you can charge. 
which in Toronto is $1,348. So at $1,348, we want to make that unit, you know, still livable, obviously, but we want to be more, the most economical. So we make 10 units in our Glen Lake building. One of them is dedicated as affordable for the next 10 years. And then we only have to meet a 25% above minimum building code efficiency standard to get our 100 points. The way that CMHC works is it, right now, because of the popularity of that program, it's taking about six months to get an approval. So I can't go and buy a property like this unless the sellers are willing to wait six months to close. So in that situation, if they were like, well, we want to close in 30, 60 days, I have no choice but to either pay cash for the property or finance it somehow, either through a private, you know, you wouldn't get anything, you wouldn't get financing on this property from anything other than private because it wasn't in a livable condition. So you're not even going to get a B lender that's interested. You got to go straight to private. So the idea is you acquire with private money, then you go and you get your approvals for CMHC. And then as soon as you're ready for CMHC, then the CMHC loan pays out your private loan, and now you're in construction financing. Yeah. Uh, speaking of taxes, the new changes to GST and HST, is it you're gonna qualify? <laughs> yeah, this project will be the first one that it qualifies for. I think that's gonna affect going for the next two to five years. Yeah, it's great. I mean, for those of you that don't know, they just changed the rule. Um, basically, any purpose-built rental projects now are exempt from GST. Uh, so we used to pay, when we finished these projects, we would pay 13% to the government on these projects. Now we would get to write off anything that we'd spent in HST, but there's a lot of things that you don't pay HST on in a build like this. Like you don't pay HST on your financing costs, on insurance, on the building itself, right? So there's a significant amount of HST that we would have to owe at the end of the project. Um, well, now that's been reduced by that 5%. So on a project like this, we'd probably save ourselves at least $100,000. Um, so that's great news for us, yeah. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're interested in learning how you can be a part of a development project like this, check out my website, darrenvoros.com for information about my upcoming courses and everything to do with the development. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.